Okay, so I haven't done one of these in a while, but we are gonna read The Relative's Cape. It is a story by Cynthia Rylant, and it is illustrated by Stephen Gamble. The Relatives Came. It was in the summer of the year when the relatives came. They came up from Virginia. They left when their grapes were nearly purple enough to pick, but not quite. They had an old station wagon that smelled like a real car and in it they put an ice chest full of soda pop and some boxes of crackers and some bologna sandwiches and up they came from Virginia. They left at four in the morning when it was still dark, but before, before even the birds were awake. They drove all day long and into the night, and while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses and different mountains. They thought about their almost purple grapes back home. They thought about Virginia, but they thought about us too, waiting for them. So they drank up all their pop and ate up all their crackers and traveled up all those miles until finally they pulled into our yard. Look how excited they are to see their family. Then it was hugging time. Talk about hugging. Those relatives just passed us all around their car, pulling us against their wrinkled Virginia clothes, crying sometimes. They hugged us for hours. I know I would hug my family real tight right now. Then it was into the house and so much laughing and shining faces and hugging in the doorways. You'd have to go through at least four different hugs to get from the kitchen to the front door those relatives. I'm sure y'all have relatives like this. And finally, after a big supper two or three times around until we all got a turn at the table, there was quiet talk and we were in twos and threes through the house getting their grub on. Looks a little differently these days, huh? The relatives weren't particular about beds, which was good since there weren't any extras. So a few squeezed in with us and the rest slept on the floor, some with their arms thrown over the closest person or some with an arm across one person and a leg across another. My son sleeps with me like that. It was different going to sleep with all the new breathing in the house. Can you imagine? Look at all those bodies sleeping. Look at the dog. <laughs> The relatives stayed for weeks and weeks. They helped us tend the garden and they fixed any broken things they could find. What helpful relatives. They ate up all our strawberries and melons. They then promised we could eat up all their grapes and peaches when we came to Virginia. Look, oh, it looks like he's wearing a Chicago Cubs hat. But none of us thought about Virginia much. We were so busy hugging and eating and breathing together. Uh-oh, he looks like he's getting a little snack. Finally, after a long time, the rel relatives loaded up their ice chest and headed back to Virginia at four in the morning. We stood there in our pajamas and waved them off in the dark. We watched the relatives disappear down the road then we crawled back into our beds that felt too big and too quiet, we fell asleep. So they sent them off to go home. And the relatives drove on all day long and into the night. And while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses and the in different mountains, and they thought about their dark purple grapes waiting at home in Virginia. But they thought about us too, missing them and they missed us. Oh. And when they were finally home in Virginia, they crawled into their silent soft beds and dreamed about next summer. And there's their grapes. So this must be a story about families coming together every summer and making a tradition out of it. I hope you enjoyed it, very good. 
Um, and I'll try and do these more often. So I hope you'll have a great day and you enjoyed the reading of The Relatives Came.